the nine and ten okay. of those because we're running short of time. I knew this was going to be a fun-filled, packed uh, show. So, um, Joe, and to obviously Dr. Bridget O'Brien, who was on earlier, Joe Burns, thank you so much for talking to me. Um, I you. really, really want you to come back and give us more information because we have more to talk about. I'm going to play a song now because all of us need to get connected out there. All of us need to speak to each other. There's only a small population in Ireland. If you can't speak to each other, get out there and tell people that we should be voting no. I don't know where we're going wrong. OK, hello and welcome back to Out of the Bag on TNS Radio Live. And um, I am honoured to have as my guest, and I'm sure um, he would uh, be happy to promote his upcoming appearance in Dublin, um, which we most certainly will be doing in a moment. But I'm so happy to and honoured to have uh, Mr. Gerald Salente. Uh, good evening. Hello, Sean. Hello, how are you? I'm well. Um, I was just talking um, to a friend of mine, um, which we call Vin, Mr. TNS, who wanted to ask me if you've got Mr. Excelente with you. <laughs> Not X <ex> yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, the revolution started and, and, and you're a big part of it because you're waking people up to the truth. And um, people here in Ireland are listening uh, intently. You've got a big fan base over here, Gerald. Um, Lots and lots of people are very, very happy with what you're saying and what you're going public with. So um, looking forward to seeing you here in Dublin. Oh, I'm looking forward to coming back. And uh, you know, just for the record, my first girlfriend, I have a photo of her in one of my books. What Zidzi gave Honey Boy was one of my books. And I have our first communion picture. And I'm holding Teresa McKelvey's hand. And we used to sit <laughs> in religious instructions and kiss. Boy, if they caught me now, they'd have me on Ritalin and <laughs> every other psych psychotic drug to knock me out. You know, yeah, you, you know, in the Catholic that. Church. You know, in the Catholic Church, they say that you reach the age of reason at seven years old. I did. <laughs> 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 they wouldn't have you doing that here now because we're all dumbed down with fluoride in the water, Gerald. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then my second girlfriend was Carol Daly. So I was going to those Irish Catholic schools that uh, I guess I had that affinity to the Irish. <laughs> One of three <laughs> Italian kids, by the way. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So um, tell us about, about uh, your recent events. What, 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 uh, what's happening in the world of gold economy and should us Irish in Europe be really worried and marching on the streets? To be marching on the streets along with the Spanish and the Portuguese and the Greeks. And it's just, it, it's beyond me, I have to tell you, Sean, how adults listen to their, these so called leaders. As I keep pointing out, the people that we call our presidents and prime ministers and chancellors and secretaries of this and that, and ministers of these and those are no more than the people that we couldn't stand in high school and college. You know, the people that wanted to be class president or head of the student council, mm -hmm. the brown noses, the suck-ups, the overly ambitious, the insincere, the glad-handers. These, the, I mean, these are the same jerks we couldn't stand, and now they're running our lives and ruining our lives and taking our lives. So I don't know what it is in the human spirit that allows people to cower to power of these powerless little puny. I think the word you use over there is wankers. <laughs> well, I'm glad it's after the watershed and you've come on quite late. Yes, they are, in fact, bankers and wankers. Um, we, we really do have a nepotistic bunch of buffoons giving the power of the Irish people away at present. And um, it's really good to hear you saying it as, it as it is, you know, Gerald. It really is. But it's a worldwide situation. You pick the country. Look what's going on here back in the States. It's the presidential reality show. A made-for-TV spectacle. If anyone watched the Democratic or Republican conventions, it was a it was a Super Bowl halftime show mixed with a mega church revival meeting. You look at the Chancellor of Germany, one uh, after another. Yeah, you you look at the Prime Minister of 
of Spain rejoice? I mean, how could people believe this guy? Yeah. No, or Holland? They're, they're criminals in my book. And um, you're the publisher of the Trends Journal. And um, I absolutely love the front cover of, of this edition where you have, you know, Jesus Christ kicking out. The only time apparently he got angry was kicking out the, 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 the money counters and the accountants out of his, his house. And um, you have him kicking out Goldman Sachs and uh, all those people. And it's really, really cool. It's like they're running our planet now, these bankers, these, these, uh, these weird psychopathic nutters who want to have wars, etc. Um one person on the chat line wants to ask you, um, how do you put up with Alex Jones, uh, Gerald? Alex is a good guy, you know, and uh, and I admire, you know, I, I admire what he does, and and he gives me a free reign to say what I want. Absolutely. And he's been very supportive. Uh, you know, you know, you don't have to agree with everything he says, but boy, oh boy, you know, he puts his neck out there, and he calls a lot of people out. When a lot of people are afraid to. No, I, I, I have nothing but good things to say about Alex. I, I, and my I, relationship I, I, agree, with him. I agree, Gerald. I think he's woken up an awful lot of people that otherwise would not be awake if it wasn't for the work he's doing. And I think it's disturbing. Oh yeah, you know. And and you know what, what's going on in the world? And let's just give a quick rundown here. I mentioned about the riots going on and the protests and the cops beating up the people in Spain. And the riots in Portugal, you know, millions taking to the streets, and in Greece, another one yesterday. And what's going on really, uh, whether it's civil wars being waged in Libya because of the psychopaths of the chicken hawks that, of, of uh, former Prime Minister Sar President Sarkozy and uh, that little chicken hawk Cameron over there and Obama over here that destroyed Libya, and that's in a civil war, Syria because, again, of the outside influences of the psychopaths just destabilizing that country, a civil war, a civil war in Yemen, a civil war going on in Bahrain. Unrest isn't going to quell in Egypt or Tunisia because there are economic problems at the, at the, at the uh, base of it. Far too few have much too much and way too many have much too little. So the money is all at the top and the people have nothing. This is class warfare by any other name. Forget that that white shoe boy language, Arab Spring. It has nothing to do with a pro-democracy movement. It has to do with a lot of angry people out in the streets that want a life and they can't have one because of the corruption. And you keep going around the globe, whether it's in North Africa or, or South Africa, now with the miners protesting in mass. And you look at what's going on in the Sudan and Somalia and the Congo. You look at Uganda. You look around the Ivory Coast. There's nothing but war and upheaval and strife going on through much of the world. Yes. And what people aren't doing, Sean, is adding it all up. And what it adds up to, it's the first great war of the 21st century. Yeah, they're, just waiting for, they, they're just waiting for an Archduke Ferdinand moment to call it official. Yeah. I mean, you, you predicted a, um, a, a World War Three, I think, um, um, for 2010. I actually think that the World War was on its way then and is and is really ramping up now. Yes. Well, we, we've been saying, well, actually, we thought the economy was going to crash in 2010. Yes. We had no idea that the centuries, including the Federal Reserve at the helm, was going to pump in an estimated 23 trillion. That's right, $23 trillion, U.S. dollars, into the system to keep it afloat. Uh, whether that money you know, went to the Bank of Scotland, Japan, BOJ, uh, it went to Deutsche Bank, it went to uh, Anglo-Irish, it went to all the banks around the world, virtually. That we, are, that we are now bailing out, yes. That we are now, exactly, they call it austerity measures. Mm. You take the money from the people and you give it to the bankers. And you mentioned that the, the cover of the Trends Journal, where Christ becomes angry. Christ didn't become angry. Christ became violent. Yes. The Prince of Peace, Peace became violent because of the greedy money junkies, yes. the bankers. They call them money changers back then. The language just changed a little bit. It went from money changers to loan sharks to financiers to central bankers. 
If it can make Jesus Christ violent, why can't people wake up and find the courage that call themselves Christians to look at what the Prince of Peace did of it because he was so revolted at the slimy actions of these greedy money junkies who had robbed society and have never stopped robbing it from back to the days of Christ. What, why can't they have the courage to stand up and take to the streets and say no? And I'm not saying to do it in a violent way. I'm saying to do it in a peaceful way. Yeah, is, is is it too late for Ireland now where we stand? I mean, I don't know if you've been watching what's been happening here. Is it is it too late for us Irish to do an Iceland or, or better? Well, the, the Irish, yeah, I mean, look what they did. I mean, look who they voted in and how they voted the last time on the referendum. Mm. I mean, you, you, so you, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. What a surprise in Portugal that the people are getting screwed by the prime minister. They voted the clown in. He said he was going to do it. What a surprise in Spain with Rajoy. He said he was going to do it. What a surprise in Greece with Samaras. He said he was going to do it. The yeah. people are voting for their own punishment. Absolutely. Well, I, I, I actually think that we, we didn't vote those ways. Now, maybe call me a conspiracy theorist if you wish, but I, I actually think there was some, some vote rigging um, I haven't, you know, it was a bit like when I lived in England and I hadn't met anyone who was going to vote for Margaret Thatcher, yet in she popped again every time, you know? Well, again, you know, I don't put anything past the government. Hey, how about those weapons of mass destruction that Saddam Hussein had, huh? Yeah. Where they're all over the place. Oh, and look at that tyrant that they threw out in Libya, uh, Gaddafi. Now look how wonderful it is over there. Oh, you remember the Vietnam War, the Gulf of Tonkin accident, the never, incident that never happened? So, I mean, how could anybody believe one thing the government says? And as we point out in the Trends Journal, we have all the quotes from all of the sociopath and psychopathic world leaders in Europe talking about how they solved the European sovereign debt crisis over the years and have solved nothing. So, of course, I wouldn't put anything past them. No. But the fact is that too many people still voted for it. Yeah. Okay, so how do we wake those people up then, Gerald? The only way, you know, that I'm coming to the conclusion in, in what I'm doing in my life and, and, uh, and seeing the way things have to turn around is that every individual has to do more for themselves, to bring themselves yeah. to higher levels. And, and, I, and I mean that in, in, in the... Um, in, 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 the, in the most personal sense, you know, it, it, we're, again, you know, we're writing, we're finishing up this um, Autumn Trends journal, and we're asking, can the course of history be changed, or is it predestined? Right. Well, it's predestined if you believe that there are, you know, the higher cosmic order that uh, Earthlings can't challenge. But is the ship of states around the world, are they being... You know, are, are they being uh, steered by uh, malevolent beings of a lower order, presidents and prime ministers and kings and emirs and chancellors and their crews, you know, the ministers and secretaries? So, so are the people going to be hapless passengers and slaves aboard a ship of state whipped in submission, or are they going to find the greatness within the human spirit? that each one of us has? Are they going to find the gifts that each individual has, the unique gift, and, and develop it to its higher level and achieve the divine responsibility? And, well, and Gerald, to me, I that's think... the only thing that's going to change it. Yeah, well, Gerald, I think it is happening. I think people are waking up. I think they are finding a higher level. Um, they are critically thinking a lot more. I mean, 30 years ago, when I was coming out with the things that I was coming out with in, in both Britain and in Ireland, people thought I was totally insane. <laughs> you know, now they're actually not just agreeing with me, but coming out with things that, you know, back then they would be called insane for, you know? You know that, that Hindu saying, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. Mm. And my belief is that when the people are ready, the leaders will appear. And right now the people are getting ready. And the people that get ready, the better the opportunity. 
Because again, how can anybody buy into these two bit freak shows? These yeah. these political parties that they have. Uh, I'm a political atheist. I don't believe in anybody's political god, and I really get tight when people try to push and proselytize their phony political gods on me. Yeah. So. When people look at it as more of a system of humanity and dignity rather than a bunch of political crap, then it will change. But as long as – I'm telling you what's going on here in the States. I could go through a list of Obama atrocities one after another. From day one, I'm going to close down Guantanamo Bay. I'm going to end the Patriot Act and bring back the right writs of habeas corpus and – do away with torture. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to wind down the wars. Guy wins a Nobel Peace Prize, sends thirty three thousand troops more into Afghanistan, has a terror Tuesday where they're sending predator drones in around the world, he and his crew deciding who's a quote suspected terrorist. The guy just opened up seven took seven hundred million acres. That's right. 700 million, with an M, acres of public land and gave it away to the frackers. I could go down one after, sign the National Defense Authorization Act, which allows the government, the military, to come in and take a person like me, accuse me of being a terrorist because of talking to people like you, and you never hear from me again. No judge, no jury, no charges, no lawyer. So how, how and do you we, tell them this, and they'll deny it. How do we take these people to task? I mean, in my in my opinion, just like Blair, just like uh, Enda Kenny in this country for poisoning uh, the population, um, th these people, Obama, they should be arrested, shouldn't they? Well, how about Bush and Cheney and Blair? Absolutely. For starting a war for fake reasons. Mm. No, of course they should. Yeah. So, so I mean, let's bring them up. Who knew what when? Yeah. That's a fair question. Mm -hmm. No, it genuinely is, and we and we need we need to be able to expose these people so much um, that the public know about it. But then they they control the media. So when do we the, our internet radio stations? When do we become the the mainstream? Because we, we're we're getting there, aren't we? Of course, you know, there's so few people believe the mainstream media anymore, and um, they're getting their news. You know, I've been writing about this since the mid '90s, yeah, and uh, and and it's, and it's going to continue to go in that way. So, for example, when you have an Alex Jones, look what he's done, and look what I've done, and you're doing, and others are doing over the internet. And I still go on the main, you know, some of the mainstream media, and um, yeah, you know, from time to time. And so you but, should. Um, but you know, the 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 thing is that it's only going, you know, my message is only going to go so far with them. In the, in the three and a half minutes that you get, you know. Yeah. So, no, I, it is changing. But again, when the people find to me the divine spirit within them, each individual, and it's practice. Anybody that's good at anything, you got you have to practice all the time. You know, the great saxophone player, Sonny Rollins, is yeah. a friend of mine. And he's in his 80s. He practices every day. I practice at my trade every day. You know, there are weekends when I'm when I would love to go out that I have to catch up in reading, and and I have to, and I do it because of if I I know that I can't BS my way through. I have to know the facts, and what so it's it's practicing at what you're great at, the divine gift that you have, and bringing it forward. When enough people do that. To me, it's going to change. And how does it begin with? Well, to me, the basics are spiritual, emotional, and physical. Yes. Look what this country in the United States looks like. We're the most obese people on the planet. The people dress like slobs and they eat crap. You think you're going to get healthy spiritually and emotionally? So start with those things. What does it take to get dressed up? Very little and you could buy really nice clothes in thrift shops and vintage clothing stores for not a lot of money. Mm -hmm. What does it take to eat well? Not a lot. Growing your what does it take to What does it take to meditate? Mm -hmm. Only your time. What does it take to do, get physically fit? 
the commitment to, to, to do it every day. And when, once you start doing those things and you get in a routine, then you keep honing your craft better. That's my belief. And when enough people hone their craft and find their greatness, they won't tolerate the crap coming from the prime ministers, presidents, chancellors, kings, and emirs. But are we going to have to replace these people with, with uh, I don't know, community leaders who can speak on, 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 on part of the people? I'm, I, maybe I'm just too brainwashed into the political structures that exist. I believe in the, in the Swiss system of direct democracy. You know, the people vote. You want to go to war, let the people vote. When was the last time Switzerland was, was in a war? I think it was 1837. But did they, are they not not going into a war because all the banks are there, the Illuminati may be there and Illuminati have moved there. Hey, whatever the reason is, you know, if money's their most important product, you know, the, the Swiss live pretty well, they eat pretty well, nice place to visit, you know, they have their rules and regulations, everybody has guns and they're not blowing each other's brains out. <laughs> you know, so to me, it's, you know, each country to its own. Okay. I but suppose at least I'm, they're I'm, not bothering anybody. Okay, but as an Irish Catholic, I think I, I am being bothered by them because, you know, who are the Swiss Guard and what do they protect? Well, again, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a portion of it. But, I mean, the Swiss Guard, Guard is only a front over there for the Vatican. Agreed. You know, it's the bankers that are, that are the real power and the money behind it, not, the, not a bunch yeah. of guys dressed up like, you know, little girls in, in fairy uniforms, you know. Well, there are some great people in, in Ireland who are taking up the direct democracy uh, Ireland um, angle. They're, they're looking at um, great people. I mean, I've met um, Ben Gilroy and uh, Ray Whitehead and Claire Leonard, the sort of people are out there um, trying to make DDI, direct democracy Ireland, the, the new political movement, the new political party. Yeah, that's, that's the way, to, you know, that's, I know, I've been, I've been in contact with some of them as well. And uh, to me, that's the future when you ask me what could be done. Take the hands out of the gang. Yeah. Why should you have a mob? The mob, they give themselves nice names, you know, socialists and, and Democrats and Republicans and thises and that's. You know, you could call them the Bananos or the Gambinos or the Lanskys or the Schultzes, you know. <laughs> yeah. So to me, direct democracy is the direct way out. And uh, it, to me, it's the only way out. OK, for, for me here in Ireland, it would need uh, not to have any ties with any other country. We can all, all learn from them all, obviously learn from the Swiss model, learn from the, 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 the Icelandic model, etc. I had um, Horda Torfersen, who was part of the, the uprising in Iceland on my show a few weeks back. And he was coming out with some amazing things that quite simply we can do, like just annoying them every week outside their houses these politicians, you know? Yeah. I mean, look what the Spanish did yesterday. Yeah. You know, they, 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 they formed a human chain around the parliament. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's those kind of things. And by the way, the other thing is it's, it's to, um, you know, it's anti-globalization. It's buying everything you can at home, supporting each other. You know, the, um, it's it's that kind of a thing. It's it's buy local. Stop eating this uh, uh, you know th this crap food that they have. Yeah. Uh, that um, you know the the the, uh, the fructose syrups and the aspartame and the and the various other crap they're putting into our foods at the moment. The GM foods are ridiculous. Um, have you heard of um, mathematically perfected economy? Have you heard of that? No, I haven't. Okay, there's a, a, a there's a, a gentleman here on TNS who's very up on it. Um, he, he he actually would would be able to do a, a talk on it, and, and 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 it sounds fantastic. Basically, it's like um, what exists now, sort of. I'm, I'm simplifying it, um, but without any usury, without any interest, so that people actually you know use their money between each other and and not actually rip each other off, you know, and and rob each other. Yeah, um, you know that. Mike Montagna, sorry, Mike Montagna. I've just been reminded by Michael Stevens in the um, chat room. Mike Mike Montagna is the guy who designed originally um, the uh, mathematically perfected economy, and he's an American, I think. Yeah, you know that might be something, but you know, again, you know, for example, you know, I don't eat corporate food. 
Mm. I don't go to corporate restaurants. I try to buy as much local as I can. Yes. You know, and so those are the kind of things to to keep. I mean, when you really get down to it, you know, there's so much that a culture could do that can that could be self-supporting. Absolutely. You know, we have all the technologies we need. We have the brain power. So what I'm saying is that, you know, make it made in Ireland, made in America, made in the UK, make it at home. Absolutely. Buy it at home. Support the home front. This whole thing of globalization, all it has done is lowered wages around the world as manufacturers went offshore to exploit cheap labor. I mean, that's the end of the story. Absolutely. No, I, I, I mean, I honestly think that Ireland is a breadbasket. It could be a breadbasket of Europe. But the EU, the UN, etc., and the influence, our farmers have been stopped from farming. That just is ridiculous. I don't understand it. Um, you know, they're pay- getting payments for leaving their, their fields empty of, of, of crops. Um, well, again, going on. but you see, that's just the detail in, in the sense of the – of the entire when the entire concept of again a political mafia running the show yeah you know, that's just another one of their criminal acts so so to me it's it's about getting rid of that yes. and and making them you know obsolete you know you have a country like the United States we have well what do we have uh, you know seven three hundred and twelve million people. Yeah. And we have a gang of 535 that are telling us what to do. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah That's we, all we, it is. 535 people yeah. telling 312 million people what to do. And they tell you with an attitude. <laughs> I'll tell you why you should believe me and why you should do what I think and why I know what's best for you. I mean, for God's sake, it was the, it wasn't it the CEO of Goldman Sachs said, you know, we're doing we're doing God's work, right? <laughs> I mean, that's just outrageous. So, Sean, that's about it for now. No worries. I'm hoping um, to, to uh, when when you're gone, I will tell people where you will be appearing in Dublin. And uh, I'll give all the details of the ticket prices and all the rest of it. Gerald, thank you so much for coming on Out of the Bag and on TNS Radio Live. Um, it, it's a pleasure, and I'm absolutely honoured to have you on my show. Oh, thank you for having me, and all the best. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Gerald. Take care. Bye-bye now. now. Bye-bye.